In this tutorial, I will show you how to easily view photos from different years. And for me, this is perhaps one of the most convenient features of Google Earth, is the ability to easily switch between photos of different years from my study area. All right, so when Google Earth first loads, it typically displays the most recent photo of your study area. And you find the date of the photo that's displayed down here where it says imagery date. And so this photo was taken in October of 2020. And so the way that you access uh, other photos is you come up here to this clock icon and you click that. And then it opens up this historical timeline, which shows you which other photos are available for your area. And then you simply just click these uh, backward or forward buttons to see which photos are available. So here we have uh, another photo from uh, also from October, but in 2016. And this is a, a leaf on photo which means that this photo was taken during the growing season when all of the deciduous trees still have their leaves on. And we'll click back one more. And so then the next photo um, that is available was taken the same year, but in April. Um, and again, we can double check the date down here. And so this is uh, was taken prior to the growing season and is what we call a leaf off photo when the leaves are not on the deciduous trees. And so for me, this is one of the most uh, useful features of being able to easily switch between photos is to be able to compare leaf on to leaf and leaf off photos of my study area. Um, perhaps the, the most useful aspect about that is to be able to accurately distinguish the hardwood trees or the deciduous trees from the softwood trees or the conifers. And so again, with the leaf on photo, it can be, it can be a challenge um, to accurately identify the hardwoods from the softwoods. But when we turn on the leaf off photo, um, the distinction is much clearer. Okay, so we'll see, keep going back. Um, we have another photo that was taken the year prior, um, but in May. And again, the growing season is just beginning. And here we can see some of the deciduous trees and shrubs beginning to leaf out. Another photo the year earlier from October. The year earlier from May. And then here we are in uh, 2011. Um, as a general rule, um, many of the photos that were taken um, prior to about 2012 tend to be taken at a lower resolution and so are, are a little bit lower quality than the more recent photos. So when we're doing habitat mapping, we typically want to be using the most current photos um, that are available. One, so we can most accurately represent uh, the current habitat conditions and also so we can um, best see the features um, of the maps. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and scroll to our most recent photo um, from our study site. All right, one important thing to note about the photos is that the photos you are able to view depend somewhat on how near or far you are zoomed in to your study area. When I'm doing habitat mapping, I like to zoom in pretty close to the study areas so I can see a lot of the fine detail within the habitat. And again, here we're looking at the most recent photo in October 2020. And so when I come up to the historical timeline and I click the back button, the button moves to indicate that there's another photo, but nothing happens. The map doesn't change. Back, forward, back. So it says that there's a photo from May of 2018, but that photo isn't displaying on the screen. So what's happening here? Well, there's a, a couple things to to be aware of. First, don't trust the date that you see on this historic timeline. This is always the date that you should use when you want to know what is the photo that is currently displayed on your screen. So how come the photo didn't change? Well, this simply means that we aren't zoomed in at the correct scale to view the May 2018 photo. And so I'll come over here and I'll use my minus button and I'll slowly scroll out. Um, and at some point you'll see the May uh, 
photo appear. And there it is right there. So why does this happen? It's important to realize that these photos are taken as a plane is flying over the landscape. And as it's flying, it's shooting individual photos that are like tiles. And we can see um, the different, some of the different tiles that are right here with these straight lines with the 20, uh, 20 photo overlaid over the 2018 photo. And so Google Earth takes these tiles and it pieces them together seamlessly so they show up as one continuous photo. And so planes are flying about every year or every other year to take photos. However, not all areas of a region or all areas of a state are flown and photographed each year. And so this can result in gaps in where photos from different years are available or scales at which photos are available. So always keep your eyes open um, for these sorts of anomalies. When we are making maps, what you want to avoid is having photos of two different years displayed within your map, um, because that can be very confusing and it can make an inaccurate map. And so if you're having issues with a map not displaying or a photo not displaying, it may simply mean that you need to scroll in or out um, to be able to most accurately display a particular photo. So zoom into the appropriate scale uh, for you to conduct the level of mapping uh, that you are interested in doing, and then come down here to the imagery date to double check the date of the photo that is displayed on your screen.